You're watching Morning at NTV. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here at Morning at NTV. My name is Romeo Busiku. Our next conversation, we're going to be focusing on how to build climate change resilience within Uganda with Dr. Talis uh, Tindinpe from the Ministry of Water and uh, water from, from, the ministry, from the Ministry of Water right there. Commission, thank you for joining us. Morning at NTV. Okay, thank you and welcome. First off, let's uh, expand on what transpired yesterday during the climate change resilience dialogue. What were some of the recommendations and outcomes that were reached? Okay, thank you very much and nice having me. Uh, yes, as you rightly say, yesterday we had the uh, dialogue on climate resilience. And basically we are trying to reflect on issues of climate change. We know climate change is affecting all countries in the world, including Uganda. And the climate change is manifest through mainly the water environment. When we have too much water, we have flooding. When we have too little water, we have droughts. When we have too dirty water, then we end up having pollution. So we're also reflecting on the fact that climate change impacts the poor mainly, and we need to work with the people in Uganda, especially the local people, to address issues of climate change so that the resilience of climate change can yes, be improved. Yes. And one of the, a number of recommendations came up. One of them is that we need to bring the people affected by climate change to part, be part of the dialogue and also taking action. What we, is the, go ahead. We need everybody to come on board. We need to have coordinated and integrated approaches to dealing with the climate change. As it is right now, we are not well coordinated. Government agencies, civil society, private sector, cultural institutions, we need to work together address climate change because it's a common problem. So it's like some kind of a public, collaboration. public partnership yes. where government institutions and members of the community can interact together. Yes. yes. But what is the importance of that? I hope the viewer understand. Uh, first of all, uh, when you are working together, you create synergies, leverage resources. We have different capacities. There are things which government does very well. There are things which the civil society do well. There are things which the private sector do well, the cultural institutions, religious institutions. So when we work together, we leverage capacities, we leverage resources, we even avoid duplication and create more impact on the ground. So it's very, very important that we work together because we have a lot we can bring on the table, all of us, to create impact and address this challenge because it's a common challenge. And what is the Directorate of Water Resources doing to uh, ensure a sustainable water supply in this country? Uh, first of all, as I mentioned, when you want to know whether there is climate change, you see it through the water environment. When you see flooding, then you see climate change in action. You see too little water droughts, climate change in action. So what we are doing, we are creating opportunities for stakeholders to work together following what we call a catchment. Water doesn't follow administrative units, it will flow where it has always passed. It will, for example, not recognize that you have, Uganda has many districts. It doesn't recognize the boundaries of Uganda. It will continue from. So we are trying to get people to plan, develop, and manage water resources following that natural unit through which the water moves called the catchment. And through that arrangement, we're ensuring that the issues that affect water, the issues that affect people, are addressed in a holistic manner so that we have sustainable water supplies. Of course, you talked about water, water catchment areas. So what are the actions that are being undertaken by the Ministry of Water to ensure that uh, we manage to enhance climate resilience? Yeah, a number of actions are being taken. First of all, we are preparing, we are bringing stakeholders to prepare what we call catchment management plans. Normally, if you want to succeed, you need a plan. If you want to fail, you, if you don't have a plan, clearly you are planning to fail. So we are bringing people to plan together to prepare what we call catchment management plans, which help them to address the challenges they are faced with, and some of them are climate change related, identify the causes of those challenges, and identify the actions. So people right now have been working together under our facilitation to prepare catchment management plans. We have already plans for 18 catchments in the country out of 32 catchments, and we identify actions that needs to be taken 
Some of them will be actions to harvest the water. Some of them will also be actions to protect the water, wetlands, tree planting, and things like that. We, are also, we have also developed a policy that whoever is using water, whether it is a hydropower dam, whether it is an irrigation scheme, a water supply system, has a requirement, has to put up to 3% of their budget to protect the catchments and ensure that the water is available now and in the future. We are also creating partnerships. We are signing partnership agreements with the private companies, with NGOs, with the church organizations, cultural institutions, so that they can come in and also make a contribution. And we are seeing a big change in how catchments are being managed on the ground. And we are, we are also getting information, Dr. Kalis, that members of the community do not know the boundaries for our you know, ecosystem, the wetlands and so forth. Is that true? And what are you doing to ensure yes. that this goes away? Yes, we have been having a challenge as a ministry in that regard. So we have now decided as one of our political actions to demarcate the, natural the, the borders. Yes. So, and we are already planting pillars. As I speak now, work is going on all over the country, working with the communities to determine what we call protection zones and plant their pillars, but also help people to utilize that protection zone for environmentally sustainable activities. What is the update on the tree uh, planting campaign that you had impact on this year? Well, we're planning to plant 40 million trees but of course we are affected by the COVID pandemic. The program is still on. Already tree planting is going on. By that one, we wanted to plant 40 million trees in one day. So that program will be resurrected when we come back to normal. But I must say that tree planting is going on all over the country. And when an opportunity comes to have that day, plant 40 million trees, I think we'll create more impact. We are also getting information that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, people use that opportunity to encroach on our natural resources or wetlands. What do you make of that? Is it true? Yes, indeed it is true. But our approach is that let's get the people to be the ones to look after these resources. Because one will say, who is actually encroaching? It's the people. So we are getting the people to appreciate the importance of these natural resources to address their livelihoods, but also help them to address issues of climate change. We are creating committees in various catchments. We are creating catchment management committees. We are creating catchment management organizations, and we are getting the people to be in the driver's seat to look after these resources which they depend on. And we are already seeing in those areas where the committees, communities are very active, degradation has actually been stopped. In areas where the communities are not active, of course, it's going on. So our focus is to get the people to actually take charge of their resources. Also take us through some of the two ways the directorate is working with other actors like uh, local governments, civil society organizations to enhance synergies in managing catchment areas to enhance climate resilience. Yes, uh, first of all, as I mentioned, water touches everybody. There isn't anybody who doesn't use water, you drink water. But how are you working with these local governments? Yes, so we are, try we are trying to get the local governments come together, plan together, implement together, and manage these catchments together. So when I mention the catchment management plan, the catchment basically will cover more than two districts. Some of them even cover up to 10, 15 districts. So we are bringing the local governments together to work with the cultural institutions, to work with the private sector, the civil society, to plan together, implement together, and utilize the resources together and through that we are creating synergies and we are also making them actually realize the benefits and of what we do. Do you believe more natural resources within Uganda will be planned, planned by members of the community if this COVID-19 pandemic assists and nothing is done to sensitize members of the communities on the boundaries in a minute? As of now of course COVID has caused challenges, it has affected the way we do things but we are getting used to that. Actually right now we work even amidst COVID. But certainly the COVID situation will affect, but we are moving forward to sensitize the people and get them to know that if they don't take action, their livelihoods will be affected and the climate change will impact them. Dr. Kalis, did you have any thanks for having made the time to speak to us? Okay, thank you very much. A nice having Looking you. forward to another conversation. Okay, thank you. A nice day. And you're still watching Morning at NTV at this opportune moment. We are going to take another river and we shall return with another conversation with... Uh,
authority uh, and in this way, focusing on the uh, day one of the MP nominations, what transpired yesterday, what uh, ideas can be put in place to ensure that we prevent violence on the uh, national stage from being replicated. Well, we are going to take another breather. We'll be ready.